Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I thought I would do a, another testing new makeup because my new makeup basket is getting a little crazy and disorganized and it's bugging me every time I open that drawer. <laughs> so I'd like to use some of these things so I can put them away um, in my collection where they should go. So, um, also yesterday I filmed a video, a collective haul, and apparently I accidentally deleted <laughs> the first part of the video. So I have to refilm that today also. So I thought I might as well film myself putting makeup on and make it a testing new makeup video. So I have a lot of things to try. I have only my skincare on and lip balm, so I'll start with primer. I actually have two primers to try, and I got them both in my BoxyCharms. So this first one is by EVO Beauty. It's the Pore Fict, like Pore, P-O-R-E, primer um, with a matte finish. So you guys know if you've watched any of my other videos. I never use mattifying products because my skin is extremely dry, but I have noticed like my pores are starting to get a bit more visible in this area. So I thought I would just apply this um, in those places and see if it actually does anything. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. So this just says natural, vegan, conscious, cruelty-free, gloom-free, paraben-free, and toxic-free. Smooth a dime size of primer over clean, moisturized skin before applying foundation. Enjoy longer-lasting makeup. Okay, so this sounds like it would be good anyway, even though I have dry skin. So it's just like a squeeze tube. So I'm just gonna take like a tiny amount, like so, and really just smooth it onto, actually I'm putting it on my nose also because that's where my pores are very visible. It does feel like a cream, so. Normally these like mattifying pore primers feel more like silicone-y, but this feels like a moisturizer, so it's a bit weird. I don't think that made like a huge difference, but oh well. <laughs> we'll just see, have to see if my product goes more smoothly over those areas, I guess. And there's no scent or anything, which I like. So the other primer I wanted to use is this very strange product from Touch and Soul. I just got this in my April BoxyCharm. It's the Icy Sher Sherbert. How do you say this word? Sorbet or Sherbert or Sherbet? I have no idea. I never understood the difference between those two things. But anyway, that's what that is. This looks so strange. Like the texture of this product is so weird. Look at this. It's like this weird gel that looks like it would be full of silicone, but this is actually silicone free. And it's supposed to, oh, I threw away the box and it of course says nothing on here. So, oh, I, I kept the boxy charm flyer. So let me just read it from there. Yes, it's the Touch and Soul Pretty Filter Icy Sher Sherbert. <laughs> primer. Lock your looks in place and keep them cool with Icy Sherbet Primer. This gel primer has an instant cooling effect once applied that hydrates and preps skin for makeup. The formula is silicone free with water capturing technology to lock in moisture and leave your skin feeling silky smooth. And apparently it retails for 32 USD. And I do have another primer from Touch and Soul that I really like. This Glassy Skin Balm. I really like this one because it's more like a moisturizer kind of texture. So I think I'll like this because it's in the same line, this pretty filter line. How much product is in this? 
30 grams. Yeah, and this is, um, you have more product in here. This one is 30 grams. Well, it's 1.05 ounces, and this one has 1.76 ounces. So it's not that big a difference. It's just the packaging makes it look like this is bigger. Anyway, let's see what this does. I did actually try like a tiny amount on my hand when I first got my box because I was just so intrigued by this texture. Um, so let's see. And it was cooling. So I'm just gonna take this much. I'm scared. It's always like risky trying new primers with new foundations because you never know if you really like either of them, but whatever. Let's just test these out. This is very cooling on the skin, so that is a true claim. So this one I'm just gonna put everywhere else. Yeah, that just kind of like sunk right in. It does feel like it gave me some hydration, I think. So I'll have to keep testing this out, but it feels really cold on the face. It's interesting. I think this would be nice like for the summer, like, you know, days where you just feel like really hot. This might help to like refresh before you put your makeup on. So now my base product that I'm going to try, finally I'm trying this Pure 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer, also from a BoxyCharm. It actually has SPF 20 in this, and I have the shade LG3, which I hope is a good shade for me. Yeah, it should be good. So I think I'm gonna apply this with a sponge. It, this didn't come with a box or anything from what I remember. Oh, it says apply liberally 15 minutes before sun exposure. Use a water-resistant sunscreen if swimming or sweating. Reapply at least every two hours. Okay, well, I'm not going to swim or sweat because it's a very cloudy day today. But let's see how this works. I have so many tinted moisturizers now in my collection. I should do like a battle of the tinted moisturizers video. So I'm just gonna start with this little amount. And I'm not expecting this to have tons of coverage because it is a tinted moisturizer. Okay, so that's one layer. It's looking really nice so far, but I need a bit more coverage for my nose and these like red areas. So I'm actually not really liking this where I put that mattifying primer. So that's kind of a bust because that primer claimed that specifically it was like smoothing and a pore primer, but it's actually like separating exactly where I put that. If you can see on camera, probably not very well, but yeah something I noticed but I think I really like this tinted moisturizer it has well again like I just said now I don't know if the primer is giving me this glow or if it's the product but I do like how my skin looks right now except for right here which is where I put that primer that was supposedly smoothing and pore filling so I don't know how I feel about that for my concealer, I didn't really have a new concealer, but the newest one in my collection is this e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, so I'm going to try this out again today. I did use it in another video, but I honestly, yeah, I didn't really love it, but let's try it again. And I'm just going to use it for some spots as well, even though it's quite like a light shade. Okay, the product is coming off my face where I put that primer. So, okay, yeah, that primer's not good at all. Um, <laughs> I'll have to pass it on, I think, because 
it's not working for me. Yeah, I just don't know if I like this concealer. It looks like very thick under my eyes and it settles like right away into my fine lines. It is a nice shade, but I just don't, I don't know. And it kind of like, I know it's called the hydrating concealer, but it looks like it dries down to like a powder. Like it looks like I put powder under my eyes, which I don't like, <laughs> especially since I have dry skin. So yeah, not my favorite. So before I put any other powder products on, I wanted to try my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter again because I only used it I think once since I got it for Christmas. I have the shade Light, no, Too Light. Yeah, I'm just going to apply this where I would normally apply highlighter. So yeah, I'm kind of layering a lot of products on today, which may not be a good idea. Wow. <laughs> I do like this product. And I have used this as a foundation, the, the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I've used it all over my face before when I first got a sample of it and I did like it like that too so but it also as you can see works really nicely over products it's just my nose that looks really bad because <laughs> because of that primer yes I really like this and I like this shade like <laughs> the squirrel just jumped so far into a tree anyway that scared me um yeah i really like this shade for my skin tone so yeah if you're new to my complexion you might like this shade too i think that's all the cream products i had to try yeah because i'm gonna use a powder blush today so i'll just move on to my bronzer i was gonna use my charlotte tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow again, but I already know that I like this. Um, and I have something else to use that I have not touched. There's cat hair in my eye. Instead, I'll use this new palette I got again in a BoxyCharm. All my makeup is from BoxyCharms or Sephora sales, basically, if you were wondering, but yeah, this is from Iconic London. It's the Blaze Chaser Face Palette. And if you guys saw my VIB recommendations, I did recommend the Iconic London Liquid Illuminator because I love that product. But I've never tried a powder product from them. So I'm going to try this today. And this has bronzer, blush, and highlight in it. So I'll use this probably for all of those things today so i'll take this off so i'm going to go in first with this shade here which do these have names no so there's no names of the shades but it's this only matte bronzer type shade i'm going to use that kind of like where i would apply contour And this is a Moda brush from a set that I got in BoxyCharm. I really like it. It's very like soft and like the perfect shape for what I'm doing right now. Like applying bronzer in this very specific area. I like this shade too. And then I'm just going to take a bit of this more shimmery bronzer and put that over top. But mostly just here on my, um, in the hollows of my cheeks and kind of like my cheekbone. I like this. Look 
Okay, so far so good. I think I'm gonna use this blush. This, yeah, no shade name, but this brighter one. And it looks kind of like a satin finish. Just use my usual BH Cosmetics 110 brush for my blush today. Nice. These are not like super pigmented powders. So if you are like just starting out with makeup or you just like a more sheer application, I think you would like this. Because I have some face palettes where you have to like dip in very gently or else it's going to look a little much. But this one, like I'm pr pressing pretty hard and it's not coming super pigmented on the face. So that's the blush. I like it. It's a nice like fresh glow. So there's two highlighters in this palette but they're both like pretty deep I would say for my skin tone at least but I think I want to just put a bit over where I put the Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm going to go in with this lighter one here and I'm going to use this tart whatever this is brush. It's quite like flimsy for highlighter but I used it yesterday and I really liked it so I'll use that again. Oh this highlighter picked up a lot of a lot of powder. I don't know if that made like a big difference. I feel like because of where my desk is I can never really see my highlighter on this side of my face because the window is on this side. So this side always looks like super highlighted, but it's really just the lighting, it, but it really annoys me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, did I not blend that out or is it just the lighting? But I, I think it's the lighting, I hope. Cause yeah, I can see it a lot more on this side. Um, that's really pretty. It doesn't look like super glittery or chunky, which I was a little afraid about considering the like hiccup in this pan if you can see I was worried it'd be like super powdery and glittery but it looks pretty smooth on the skin okay I think that's enough highlighter for today <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. I was considering not keeping this when I first received it because I had just received like the month before in my BoxyCharm another face palette from Pretty Vulgar which I really liked but I like this one too so and it does have kind of the same shades but I like both of them and now you can get Iconic London on Sephora. So that's good because this is kind of like a pricey brand for what it is. I will say that. So that's why I mentioned it in my VIB sale video because it's good to get a discount when you can. Let me see if I have the price of that. No, I don't think I kept that BoxyCharm flyer. So I don't know how much this is, but I liked it so far. Yeah, I really like that highlighter. It is a bit more like golden tone, but since it's coming up like more warmer months, I think it'll be nice for when I have a bit more sun. But now I like my base more. It just um, my nose and mostly this side of my face. That looks kind of busted, but we'll see how it wears. So I'm just going to apply my Urban Decay Primer Potion before I go in with my eyeshadow. I'm trying to pan this product so even though I don't need an eyeshadow primer if I'm not like going anywhere, <laughs> uh, I'm using it anyway. I do find like it is a good product. It's just, I don't know if I need it for daily use. 
So for my eyeshadow, I'm very excited. I'm finally going to try my Natasha Denona Mini Retro Palette. I've been wanting to put this on my eyes ever since I bought it, but I just, I don't know, I guess I have too many other palettes to use. But I did mention this one in my spring palettes video because I think this is a very nice spring color story. So I'm going to use this today. So I'm going to go in first, obviously, with this shade. Um, this is Vintage Taupe, if I'm looking at that correctly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is because there's no other taupe shade, I would think. So this shade is pretty subtle on my skin tone, but that's okay because I can use it as a crease shade because there's no cream shade in this palette. Normally, you guys know, if you watch my other videos, I usually go in first with a cream shadow to like brighten up and use as a base, but this is the lightest, sh lightest shade in the palette, so. Yeah, and it is going on like more like a taupe. Now that I have it on my eye. It looks quite pink in the pan, but it is called. So I really also need to use this green shade. This is called 60s. So I think I'm going to focus this one more directly in the crease here and in the outer corner just to like add some depth. And then I think I want to try and use every shade in this palette because they all just look so pretty. <laughs> so I think I'm going to use this pink, this pixie shade for like the inner third of my eyelid. Let me see, I think I'll, will I use my finger for this? Yeah. And I have to be really careful with this shade because it looks like it's about to fall out of the pan. If you can see that, um, it's like cracked here. So it came like that and I'm kind of concerned. This is really like, um, it's not like a super metallic shade, I would say. It feels like a bit more dry for the like middle to outer corner I want to use this really pretty industrial shade. This one looks more like chunky glittery so I think I'll use a brush. So I'm going to try this first with a brush and see if I need to maybe dampen it or use my NYX glitter, glitter glue, is that what it's called? Ooh. No, it's going on really nicely. Very glittery, this one. Has like silver sparkle in it. That's really pretty. It's like really brightening up my eye, I feel. Let me just put a bit with my finger. Yeah, okay, it's really, it's so much better with your finger. Um, yeah. Of course, like, if you just wanted it more subtle, it was fine with the brush, but with your finger, it really makes it more opaque. But I just have to go back in now and kind of blend that out. So I'm gonna dip back into the first shade I used, the taupe shade just to kind of make that more seamless. And I did kind of lose some of that um, matte green, mossy green shade called 60. So I'm gonna go back in with that. And then there's this shade, which also looks like it might fall out <laughs> of the pen. And this looks like an extremely flaky, glittery shade. This is called Gala Galaxia. Galaxia. That one, I definitely am mm, a little scared. 
I want to use it for my inner corner highlight. So let's see how it works with my little inner corner highlight brush that I always use from Aveda. Oh, yeah, this shade is like barely hanging on. It's almost like loose, like a loose shadow. So I have to be very careful with this. Wow, that's really pretty though. It has like different color sparkles. It's almost like a duochrome. Yeah, you can see it more <laughs> like this in the light. That's really pretty. But I'm very scared that it won't stay in the pan. So I kind of want to replicate that like gradient kind of thing. Um, on the lower lash line. So I'll first go in with the taupe shade and then the middle greeny shade. And then the, the shade here. So I'm going to do the same on this side and then see if I want to change anything and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, we got a little extra glittery because I went in with more of this chunky shade and it kind of just went everywhere so now I have like glitter all in my under eyes. Um, I don't think I'll use this shade as a inner corner highlight again. Um, I'll use it more with my finger like as a topper and just pat it on because it's just so like messy and flaky but it is really pretty it's just like it wasn't the look I was going for but that's fine um yeah I like everything else yeah it's just a nice like it's like kind of grungy but also like ethereal I don't know I really like this color story, but I'll have to keep testing it some more and trying out the different... Well, I did use every shade in the palette, so I have a good idea, but just like different combinations of shades, I guess, is what I mean. But yeah, so I think I'll just stop touching it before it gets even crazier. I am going to go in with my Tarte Fake Awake. Um, on the waterline just to brighten it up a little. What else do I have that's new? I don't have... Well, I did have a new brow product, but I already used it in a video. It was the brow bar, so... Yeah, I just think I'm going to use my normal brow products and mascara, because I do have new mascaras, but I I do not want to open another mascara because I keep doing that and then I have, like right now I have four mascaras open. Well, one is a primer, but it still counts because I use it with the mascara. So I don't need to open any more <laughs> new mascaras right now. So I'll just do that off camera because it's nothing new and I don't have any special techniques to share with you so I will do that off camera and we'll be back to do a lip. I just did my brows with my usual Essence Make Me Brow, my Milk Kush Clear Brow Gel which I do not like, I've decided. <laughs> um, or I just don't like those two products together and I wasn't able to get the Anastasia brow freeze during the sale because it's still out of stock so yeah I'll just have to keep using that I guess and my mascara so I'm using the L'Oreal Voluminous Paradise these are in my project pan the primer and the mascara I find the mascara is not gonna last much longer it's like getting very thick and dry the formula but this is still going strong, so I think I'll have to use the primer with some of my other mascaras and see if it does anything. But yeah, and then for the lower lash line, I use my 
Wet n Wild Mega Length because I just love the skinny brush on this because there is no way I can use the L'Oreal Paradise brush on my lower lash line. I already get it everywhere when I use it, so yeah. I'm starting to not like that mascara as much as I used to, so. But I think it's mostly because it's just getting old. But anyway, we can do the lips now. For lips, I have a lot of different things as usual. Let's get out everything here. So these are all the lip products that were in my new makeup bag, which is way too many. I don't know if I ever hauled this product, the Milk Makeup Electric Glossy Lip Plumper. And I did buy this like when it was relatively new. And I've seen now like some pretty not good reviews on it <laughs> because it's like very thick and stringy apparently but I got it in a shade because I wanted to use it like a tinted lip balm kind of also so I got the shade Wired I think it was described as like a coral um yeah it's very bright so definitely does not go with this look today but I do have this and I kind of want to do a video testing different lip plumpers because I have so many of them now and I feel like some of them brands are just using the name lip plumper now when it's not even a lip plumper it's just like a gloss so I'd like to like test them out and see which ones are actually plumping so I have that but I'm not going to use it today because it doesn't go with this look I also have three liquid lipsticks that I got in a set I did use these on camera before so I did talk about them already they're from the brand Half Caked um, but I don't think I'm in like a lipstick a liquid lipstick mood today I also have this from a boxy charm the touch no Sol de Janeiro I was gonna call it touch and soul um, keep it Rio tinted lip balm this smells like cake or something. This looks really pretty. I might use that today. I also have a Milk Makeup Lipstick in the shade Deuces. That's really pretty also, but not for, I don't know, not for this look, I don't think. It's like a rosy kind of shade. I have my Melt lipstick in the shade 710. This is a matte lipstick. Is this broken? Okay. I thought it, <laughs> thought it was broken for a second. This is a very interesting, like, mustardy shade. But again, not for these eyes. This would be really nice with, like, a more warm tone eye. I have my Charlotte Tilbury jewel lips is that what these are called this is just a mini one that would be really pretty also it's a sparkly lip gloss and my merit shade slick tinted lip oil this i also think is too warm for this look yeah but it's very sheer um i've used this before also so yeah, I think the Sol de Janeiro is the winner today. This is just a lip balm, like I said. That's, um, that's pretty. It is very, very sheer. Um, it looked like it was going to be kind of like a nude, but because it's so sheer, like you can still see the pigment of my natural lip color coming through. But it feels really creamy and moisturizing. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do today. And for setting spray, the newest one 
that I have in my collection. I used in my drugstore video, the Milani Cannabis Sativa Seed Oil Hydrating Facial Mist. Um, but I also finally got this from my condo because I was keeping it in, like, I had a Sephora Favorites kit from, like, years ago, honestly. <laughs> And I kept it like everything in the box and this was one of the products in there. The Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. So I actually haven't used this. I think I used it once honestly. So I'm going to use that today. Because my skin isn't like overly dewy right now anyway. So yeah. If it was I probably wouldn't use this because this is very dewy. Like yeah. You'll see. And it does, it's not like the finest mist either, like it kind of spread it out and I can see like where it landed. But I think you can already tell the difference that made. So yeah, be sparingly with this if you have oily skin or you don't like to look very dewy because it will definitely make you look dewy. Um, but I think that's it for today. I know this was like maybe a little boring. I don't know, was it? Let me know. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Um, yeah, so I hope you liked this video anyway. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.